For as long as I can remember, I always wanted to be in the Army. Stopping the bad guys, uh, saving the oppressed. You know, G.I. Joe and Rambo had me. They had me hooked. Uh, fast forward a few years, and I'm an intel collector in the Army in Baghdad, Iraq. Uh, collecting information from people by either interrogating the guys that we caught or uh, running informants or people who are willing to snitch. Uh, I've never been good at lying. It makes me uncomfortable, but luckily I've always been pretty good at reading people and even better at manipulating people, as bad as that sounds. So I excelled at what I did and I rose to the ranks pretty quick. Getting used to seeing someone crying and begging on their knees in front of you for you to let them go, it's hard to do, you know, because you're human, so of course you're going to feel bad. But after several interrogations and seeing multiple of your units, you know, already taking casualties, you begin to feel less sympathy. Uh, and you feel even less after tens of them and then hundreds of them. Uh, after one year and three months, uh, you pretty much don't trust anybody. Either everyone is a terrorist or they're a sympathizer. By the end, um, I was just really tired of all the lying, um, not just on, on the detainees part, but on my part as well. And I was tired of all the crying and... Um, I got home and immediately felt uh, that phenomenon. Uh, and I call it that because that's the best way to describe it. It's weird. It's like when you go into class on the first day of school, uh, you take out all your stuff, and when the teacher begins discussing what you'll be learning, you realize you're in the wrong class. Uh, take that bizarre moment of realization and stretch it out indefinitely. It's kind of like that. You literally feel like an alien on another planet, and you almost feel guilty for being there. My behavior had become uh, self-destructive, and it affected the rela relationships uh, with the people close to me. Where I tried to gather my thoughts in order to prepare for the next deployment, uh, this time it was gonna be to Afghanistan. Uh, it was gonna be a different environment, different mission. Uh, I learned to repel from cliffs, uh, zip line across ravines and fire from high altitudes. I felt like I was ready, so I was excited and uh, ready to go. When I got there, uh, I had gotten stationed in an area that was very undeveloped. Uh, we hadn't had a lot of presence there, so I essentially had to go looking for my own informants in the villages. Um, talking to village elders, uh, the, the Afghan government people, you know, the army, the police, stuff like that. And of course, talking to the villagers whenever we would run into them. And I learned very quickly that the local extremists watched where we went and who we talked to very closely. And the reason they did that is so that when we left, they would go perform their own version of an interrogation on the people that had talked to us. Uh, and that essentially scared the shit out of everyone from talking to us. Uh, it's a very effective method on their part. Caution was the main key there because you don't really know how shitty you can feel until you get a call or until you call your informant um, to schedule a meeting. Uh, but instead of them answering, it's their family that answers and they ask you what took you so long to call because uh, your informant was killed by the extremists uh, like about a month ago for talking to you. And then you're just kind of left there, you know, blank. You don't really know what to say or how to respond to that. Uh, 
you start asking yourself questions like, you know, was it something that I did? Was it something that he did? Could I have prevented this from happening, you know? And what kind of hell did the family have to pay in order for them to still be alive right now? Because they don't really allow, I guess, survivors if they find out that one of your uh, family members is talking to the U.S. So, again, I told myself that what I was doing was saving American lives and putting the bad guys behind bars or in the ground. Bombs, rockets, mortars, guns. They were going to attack me whether I was on the base or off the base. Um, I could deal with that. I, I can accept the paranoia and the anxiety that comes from that because that's what I was looking for. Uh, but it's the moral dilemmas or like the ethical questions that that will mess with your head. Uh, you know, they're burning elementary schools, killing female teachers for promoting female education, uh, extorting churchgoers and local businesses, using the mentally handicapped to perform suicide bombings. Every time I thought that they couldn't get any worse, I'd see the news from back home saying that they wanted to stop the U.S. from using, using missiles because it caused casualties. But after a year, I returned home again. Um, I loved it and I hated it, but I had gotten everything I needed from the war zones. I was ready for a more strategic type assignment, something a little more covert. But when the army informed me that they weren't gonna be able to fulfill that request, uh, I was kind of pissed because I'd given so much time to them. And when they told me that the only assignment that they could offer me in return was either another Iraq or Afghanistan assignment, I decided it was time for me to leave the army. So I left and I returned back to that strange land in which I had felt that curious phenomenon. For several years, I struggled with not only trying to identify that feeling, but also with attempting to rediscover myself. Rather than become a victim to my inner demons, I decided to look for help because I had had a few friends who had committed suicide and I didn't want it to reach that point for me. After speaking with the PTSD expert and several veterans, I finally realized something, or two things, I should say. When you're a veteran, the two most common questions that you'll receive from someone who's not a veteran is, why did you join and did you kill anybody? And while you would think that the replies would be different, I had finally realized after all those years that the answers to those two questions were actually the same for every single veteran, uh, even if they didn't realize it. The truth of the matter is each veteran joined because they had an underlying emotional or spiritual issue as abstract or as dark as that may seem. They might join to run away from that issue or they might join just to prove something to themselves or see if they can resolve that issue by joining. They may join to mask that issue in hopes of starting a new life or becoming someone else type thing. In either case, they join because of an inner void and hope joining will fill that void. When you're in a war zone, a person's fortitude will be strained to its breaking point. The only way to keep from breaking is to kill off a part of yourself uh, the part of yourself that clings to life, that 
clings to ideas of wrong and right or bad and good, that part must be killed or you're not going to survive. In a sense, you need to go mad or crazy in order to cope with the realities of your current world. Those who are unable or just unwilling to take this adaptation uh, sadly commit suicide as a result of the inevitable breaking point. It's hard to come back from that type of mindset. And unfortunately, when people leave the military, they no longer have that camaraderie or sense of purpose. So the mindset that had saved them in the war zone is now killing them in civilian life. It becomes a sinkhole that continues to grow until it catches you and consumes you. Talking to a civilian is difficult, not because you feel you're better than them, but because you feel so different from them. The truth is that void can never be filled. Those that try to fill it with distractions are only feeding it. You need to stop feeding the pit, impede its growth, and accept that it's gone. Carry the good and bad memories of that pit with you and find another purpose in life. The purpose cannot be to replace that void because that would be impossible. Instead, the purpose has to be in a completely new location. You can come back to observe for nostalgia, but you have to return to that new purpose and drive on.